AI is a technology that's deeply profound that will reshape the world. There's not the slightest doubt about that. When Bill Gates said that, he wasn't just talking about software. He was talking about a total shift in human history. In 2025, that reshaping officially arrived. It is still the hottest ticket in town, but the vibe has shifted. It's no longer about what AI might do. It's about what it is doing to your job, your economy, and the global balance of power. To see where we are heading, you have to listen to the people holding the steering wheel. These are the top nine people shaping AI and the quotes that defined the year. Number nine, Jeffrey Hinton, the warning shot, the godfather of AI. And I think for mundane intellectual labor, AI is just going to replace everybody. Hinton helped invent AI that is now reshaping work. This wasn't a warning about robots in factories. It was about spreadsheets, reports and analysis, the core of white-collar life. He reframed AI from a helpful tool into a massive labor shock. Number 8. Sam Altman. Responsibility at scales. CEO of OpenAI. Look, I don't sleep that well at night. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I feel a lot of weight on, but probably nothing more than the fact that every day hundreds of millions of people talk to our model. And I don't actually worry about us getting the big moral decisions wrong. Maybe we will get those wrong too. But what I worry, what I lose most sleep over is the very small decisions we make about a way a model may behave slightly differently. But it's talking to hundreds of millions of people, so the net impact is big. Altman's quote defined the emotional weight of the year. This was the year AI moved from experimental to civilization scale infrastructure. It also signified the scale of competition by model labs, where new models are dropped monthly. Number 7. Demis Hassabis, Speed Shock, CEO of Google DeepMind, Nobel Prize winner. Probably 10 times the impact the Industrial Revolution had, and but 10 times faster as well. Right? So instead of 100 years, it takes 10 years. By this, Hassabis was referring to AI. Hassabis highlighted the speed gap. Every previous revolution gave us decades to adapt. This one is compressing centuries of change into a few years, explaining why every institution on Earth feels permanently behind. Number 6. Mark Zuckerberg, the $100 billion insurance policy, CEO of Meta. If we misspend a couple hundred billion dollars, that's unfortunate, but the risk is higher on the other side. This quote explains the trillion dollar arms race. To the giants of big tech, burning cash is survivable, but being irrelevant in the age of AI is a death sentence. Spending as this massive scale spurred the debate about whether we are in an AI bubble. Number 5. Jensen Huang, Automation Without Apology, CEO of NVIDIA, the man running the world's largest company by market cap. Often described as the arms dealer of AI, since his GPUs are the force behind AI. Every task that can be automated with AI should be automated with AI. Huang didn't just sell the chips, he delivered the directive. This defined the execution phase of 2025. The moment companies stopped debating ethics and started pushing AI into every corner of their operations. Number 4. Dario Amade, AI as National Security. CEO of Anthropic the second largest private AI company in the world, and the leader in coding AI. Eventually the models are going to get to the point where they look like a country of geniuses in a data center. Right. We sell these chips to China, that just makes it more likely they will get there first. It's common sense. Selling advanced chips to China is mortgaging our future. In 2025, AI stopped being just tech and became a strategic weapon. Amadei's quote captures why supply chains and export controls now matter more than model benchmarks. AI is the new geopolitics. This also captures the state of the US and China race to be number one in AI. Number 3. Satya Nadella, the human counterbalance. CEO of Microsoft. Early investor in OpenAI. We want to have these AIs that can then interface with us, they also need to develop a better sense of how to interface with our needs across these three. Uh, and so, yes, I would subscribe to it. I mean, IQ has a place, but it's not the only thing that's needed in the world. And I've always felt at least as leaders, you know, if you just have IQ without EQ, it's just a waste of IQ. Nadella reframed leadership. In an age of perfect logic, the most valuable assets are now judgment, empathy, and human trust. Number two. Sundar Pichai, The Reality Check, CEO of Google. 
Now the comeback king with Gemini 3. Who used it first? Maybe Karpati did. AJI. Have you have you heard AJI? Mm -hmm. The artificial jagged intelligence. Sometimes feels that way, right? Both there are progress and you see what they can do. And then like you can trivially find they make numeric letters or like, you know, counting R's and strawberry or something which seems to trip up most models or whatever it is, right? So we are in the phase of artificial jagged intelligence. Pichai gave us the most honest term of the year. It set realistic expectations and finally cut through the blind hype. And at number one, Elon Musk, the extreme vision, CEO of XAI's Tesla, the richest man in the world. 10, 20 years, something like that. For me, that's long term. Um, my prediction is that work will be optional. 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 Whether you find it visionary or dangerous, this quote captured the far edge of AI's promise. A world where robots do the labor, and humans choose meaning over money. It is the ultimate goal, and the ultimate controversy, of the race we are in. Nine quotes. Nine signals. Together, they explain why AI felt different in 2025. Faster, heavier, and more consequential. So which one defined your year in AI?